Oysters especially are really versatile. I like them in pastas, rice dishes, scrambled eggs, omelets. They look like sculptures, mushrooms with exotic names like lion's mane and blue oyster. Ash Gordon says there's a mushroom for every taste. It's marvelous. It's what such a wonderful surprise. Who would have thought? Getting out, talking to the public, meeting the public, um, you know, just educating the public on um, locally grown food, healthy food. And it's been a key to, to growing my business, being able to connect with the customer. Nebraska Mushroom is located in Grand Island, an indoor farm Gordon operates with help from his mother. Pretty much everything we do together, from making them to picking them to eating them. It's an unusual crop. The varieties we grow are um, quite a bit different than what you normally would find at the grocery store. The process starts in the lab using mycelium, a culture of mushroom tissue stored in a tube called a slant. And then when we're ready to grow that certain mushroom, we take this out of the fridge, uh, we'll cut a small pea-sized piece of the mycelium from the slant and we'll transfer that to a petri dish. After colonizing in the petri dish, the mushroom culture is mixed with sterilized grain and eventually transferred to bags of sawdust. So we start from that pea-sized piece of mycelium and we expand that out to you know thousands of pounds of substrate. Um, so this jar will make uh, five master bags. Then each one of those bags will make 30 of these. So these are um, shiitake bags. And in a so, temperature-controlled room, um, the mixture begins to bubble up and change color. When fully colonized, the bags are moved to greenhouse-like structures. These are oyster mushrooms, so we just cut holes in the bag, and the oyster mushrooms, uh, they recognize that fresh air, and so they will fruit at that point, and then they grow out of the bags. Growing mushrooms is a constant learning process. For example, a lot of work and research goes into understanding the needs of a finicky variety. If I give it too much food, it makes mutants. Uh, if I don't let it brown enough, it won't pin properly. Um, if I don't flip it over, then the mushrooms will try to grow under the rack. So it's kind of a, can be a pain sometimes. <laughs> I just learned it just by reading books, reading on the internet, and then uh, taking you know the stuff that I've read and putting it into practice. There's a lot of science in it. I would say the art is uh, in manipulating the conditions so that uh, the mushroom knows it's time to fruit and then will we'll produce for us. So that's kind of the art part of it, I would say. Throughout the process, Gordon tries to make sure nothing goes to waste. We cut them, dry them, and then store them, and then uh, we sell them as well. It just gives us a, a way to not have to throw mushrooms away. Gordon produces extracts that take advantage of health benefits of mushrooms. And leftover material used to grow the crop is collected for use as a fertilizer. Once we're done um, harvesting the mushrooms, we bring the bags out here and we dump the substrate into the pile. Um, it sits here for about a year uh, to weather and then after that we take it and uh, we're using it in organic farming for vegetables. And so all these are going to uh, the Holiday Harvest Farmers Market this Sunday. Nebraska Mushroom sells its products to restaurants, grocery stores, and at the Lincoln Farmers Market. The best part is the people's reactions, you know. Uh, you know, they didn't know so many, there were so many edible mushrooms and uh, all the different colors and shapes and textures. Gordon hopes to expand his business to include creating products that help other farmers get into the business really hoping to uh, give people a more affordable, easier option to get into mushroom growing. Really good sauteed with like butter, onion, garlic really brings He uh, has amazed us. It's been uh, a learning experience for all of us and he has just exceeded all of our expectations and is doing wonderful with it. People are starting to get back into really thinking about where their food's coming from, how it's produced, and that it's being produced in a, in a healthy manner. We just kind of keep things as natural as possible.